okay so YouTube finally I have my solar panels connected to the grid it's been sitting here for a while uh, I've been going two inspections that I failed the inspection that I failed I'll go over some of the, the deficiencies that I had to correct um, I'm gonna start here at the solar panel um, so the first thing is these solar panels were installed at the bottom if you uh, seen my previous video you notice that the solar panels were all the way to the bottom uh, it was easy for me to install that's what I did uh, if the, so the inspectors told me um, from Ontario Electrical Authority if I was if I want to install solar panels at the bottom here I have to protect all the cables with uh, a mesh it's a specific mesh and there's a uh, dimensions for the size of the meshes so I didn't want to go through that it was much easier for me to raise it so I raised it uh, so that was one of the uh, one of the one thing that they pointed out and so I had to fix that that was a big one and then uh, the second time they came they picked another issue with this area I'll talk about what they picked by the inverter the first time they came uh, when I get to the inverter but today I'm just gonna focus what they picked the second time so the second time they told me that all these cables uh, these cables there or the cables the conductors they gotta be at least two and a half meters up so that kids cannot reach it right but then they forgot to tell me, so which I did there, they forgot to tell me that they have to be in a conduit, inside of a conduit, within the meter of the solar panel. So I did that, I put them inside of a conduit, and I made sure these, uh, you know, I had like a makeshift uh, covering also to make sure all the cables are covered because I didn't want to add another conduit here and I just want to, you know, this is my own thing. So I, I did that and corrected it and make sure that uh, the conduits are covered so that it's not unsafe for any kids who may come up. I don't know any kids gonna come here, but if any kid touch it, it's uh, it's safe. So I did that. So I put it inside a conduit. Also, the other, uh, I had to put I, will, I I have to put these T junctions and have to be electrical uh, rated T junction. These pipes here you cannot grab any normal plumbing pipe and put it there has to be electrical rated so I originally had the wrong uh, T junction I had to get this box a junction box uh, and redo that because I have the sensor for my solar col collector solar thermal collector which I install I'm gonna install next so this is this heat sensor cable that uh, goes in the trench along with the along with the my uh, conduit here uh, so that was what they picked. They told me to secure it. I secured it as much as I can and The other thing is that as you can see here The cable They didn't want this cable exposed But I convinced them that because I have my solar collector above it So it almost counts as as if it was in a meter of uh, the solar panel so they wanted me to put it in the condo and I'm like, this is too much. You know, every time I come, they don't tell me the whole thing and they tell me a little bit. You know, I read to the manual and I do my thing and, and, and then they're supposed to tell me my deficiencies and then they don't tell me in the complete. So so last time they came, I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's hidden and it's, it's nobody can reach it, right? And it's underneath and it's gonna be solar collector above it, right? So it's safe. Later on in a year, I'll uh, probably cover it so that it doesn't, have UV, uh, so it has UV protection. Uh, the grounding and bonding, I did a good job. I had a cable left over, like I was, I lucked out. I had lots of cable left over, so I grounded it. I don't know if you can see. I grounded each panel. I don't know if you can see there. There's a grounding, a long. It's a copper wire, you know. It comes all the way up there, down all the way, and uh, it's. It's kind of bonded uh, at this junction here, right there, right? And then I had this green leftover cable, that's what I used. And I, I, I have number 12 going through that pipe inside that trench. So those are the things that I failed and I corrected that and I was able to plug the solar panel. So like I said, if I were to have more solar panel in the future, I have to put a mesh to protect all the cables here, so it will be more cost. 
So I, I chose to raise it up, which means also I get more, a better sun coverage, right? The trees are not covered, so it's better I did that. It's producing five kilowatts. I'll show you in a minute inside the house. It's, producing, it's, full, it's a full production right now. Uh, it's I think around 11 o'clock in the morning. And I, I get a clear, a clear uh, sun on it, which is excellent. Okay, uh, now my mistakes, some of the failures that I had at that point. And uh, you know, once I corrected those things and I turned it on for the first time, I had no issue because I used uh, these furls uh, connectors and I make sure all my connectors are tight. I used higher gauge as opposed to number 10. I, I think I used number eight for the solar cables. So it's higher gauge, there's no voltage drop in it. Uh, no issues with uh, fear of uh, fire because you know when you, whenever you use higher gauge, uh, it's much better than using the lowest gauge that uh, uh, get wire gauge that you can use. I was originally thinking to use number twelve when I read something, and and then uh, I chose number ten, and then number ten was not available for me, so number even number ten, number eight was cheaper, so I went with number eight, and that's what I used. I, I could have easy, uh, I could have got, got, got by with number 10. So the two DC uh, cables coming in this conduits from both arrays. Those arrays are eight panels per each array. So four, four to the left and four to the right are on separate uh, strings. So two strings there, uh, conductors will come in along this trench up here and they separate into two conduits. You can see two conduits, and each of them go into two string inputs onto the solar inverter. So literally very simple. So okay, you you connect a solar uh, panel there, and you run it to uh, this DC disconnect inside. I don't, I'm not gonna open it. It's very simple. It shows you the input for, for the, the strings DC inputs and you uh, make sure you use uh, I'm gonna show you if I have a chance these uh, end fur furl connectors it, it brings those wires tight together uh, and you're able to insert and uh, pull out easily you're not gonna have uh, cross connect and uh, electrical short if you do that so what they failed me for, uh, uh, they, they frowned upon it. I have uh, a grounding cable, that's number 12, that uh, runs into this uh, three quarter inch uh, conduit uh, and, and grounds this system to everything else. But it doesn't run in this one here. There's no grounding cables in this one. But these two cables, they come together right about there under the trench so it, kind of, it, it has some protection because somebody digs into that trench and they hit a, a conductor electric conductor they're not they're protected they're not gonna that ground will ground them basically that's the idea right but i supposed to have another ground cable in that conduit that uh, half inch conduit i did not do that and they kind of passed me because the run is from here to there they were like uh, was not were not okay with it but they let me go because it was uh, too much work but you're supposed to have every time you have a live conductor two conductor positive negative whatever two conductors you're supposed to have grounding along with it and this one doesn't have grounding they could have failed me but they let it go because they both come together over there the other issue was again the sensor i was using the wrong uh t uh, from another plumbing uh, tea. So I had to get an electrical junction box and I, as soon as I replaced that, they let me uh, do that. And they told me to secure everything the way I secured it, secure all these pipes. So, and then they, uh, you know, after I secured it, it was all good. The next mistake I made was I had the wrong expensive disconnect, AC disconnect panel. So literally, after this, the string comes in there, the DC input, an AC output comes out and it goes into disconnect. And then inside later on, I'll show you 30 amp breaker. It goes to 30 amp breaker, 100 amp panel. 
So this little disconnect, I got it for 24 bucks at Lowe's, very cheap. Uh, the one I had before was very expensive. It could get up to 500 uh, and was not um, was not rated for outside roots. It was not uh, weatherproof. This one is very simple and weatherproof. It's a simple junction because it has this cover, uh, water does not get in. It's, uh, it's got uh, it sheds water away, so water cannot get inside. So literally, if there's any problem in the house, you would pull that and it would disconnect the AC from the house. Right, so right now it's in the own position. And inside is just junction box. So the other thing they filmed me was I used two conductors. I went literally, I forgot about the neutral. So there's 120 in each side, uh, AC output, 120, which adds up to 240. And then there's a neutral. So that neutral is supposed to be marated in there, which I did second time I fixed it. And I used the wrong gauge in here. I was I used number 12. It, it told me to change it to number 10. But I, I, actually, I, t I, I used number 10. He told me to change it to number 8. So the number 8 conductor is over here too. So there's number 8 conductor. It goes in. Uh, it goes 120 and in neutral. So the 120, the neutral is marated. Uh, and it goes into the house through a conduit. Uh, so I corrected that. I changed that cable there and it was fixed. So that was my mistake that I corrected. Um, so usually uh, conductor size, grounding, uh, these are like electric code rules that they ding you on for safety reasons. Uh, and you just got to pay attention to those, read it. So you don't have this inspector coming because I had a delay for like two months to book uh, an inspector inspection. It just takes, it just uh, these, uh, the logistics is too much, right? When you're dealing with booking and stuff like that. So finally, he told me to plug it in into the system. I originally thought that uh, if I feed it into the grid, and it's, uh, I don't have the net metering, uh, it would call, it would actually um, charge me. It would charge me toward. It will add to the water in my consumption. But he said, no, it would not go out to the meter, it comes into the house. You use what you use, the leftover goes to your neighbor without uh, uh, turning the meter one way or another. But if you have a net metering meter outside, then you get credits, it, it collects the, it reads the credits, right? Uh, so I, now I have, I have it connected to the grid, it's producing, and I'll show you in a minute. So basically it comes out through this conduit, and uh, no issue here. Uh, 30 amp uh, is rated for 25 amp is what it produces. So I went uh, five per, five amp more for capacity reason and the 30 amp breaker. So it terminates onto these 30 amp breakers. So it comes through that conduit there, simple into this 100 amp panel and terminates right into the house. It's not connected to any meter outside, nothing, just right to the house, right? And uh, so right now, as you can see, I was checking it like earlier, is producing, um, wow, wow, it's producing 2.4K. But before I left, it was 4.9. I guess it's raining, that's why. So I had to update it. Let's see. I did an update. Uh, there's easy instructions how to uh, Wi Fi. So it's connected through Wi Fi. Uh, there's a Wi Fi cable, like I'm connected to the, uh, the this is ABB 5 kilowatt. Uh, ABB Uno 5 kilowatt inverter um, and uh, so 5 kilowatt is good enough for me right now it's producing 2.6 because it's raining uh, earlier I was producing 5k this is beautiful right uh, all this is my information uh, through I also there's also an app I can check how the inverter is doing uh, and that's it I mean uh, you need to Pay attention to these little things about electrical uh, codes, and it, um, you will not you won't pass you pass first time. When I connected it, it was no there was no issue with inverter. It worked right away, and it only like took me two minutes. And I did some firmware updates, and everything was. Uh, I did not have any problem with the conductors. Uh, like I said, I use these these. Uh, 
referrals I bought on Amazon was I don't know where I have it. Um, I don't know if I can find it, but uh, okay, I can't find this far. Maybe I'll do a separate video on a on a furl that I bought. These are. Uh, in the connector furl is uh, one of the best purchases I made. Twenty six dollars on Amazon, and uh, it it kind of bundled my conductor together and made it easy. I have uh, parts everywhere here. I thought I have it here, but I guess I don't have it. I don't know where I put it. Anyhow. That's another thing. Um, so, it's looking good. Uh, I have solar production. Like I said, my goal is five kilowatt is good enough. And uh, I just uh, checked my my outputs, uh, my consumption, uh, and I consume in September 600 kilowatt hours for everything. Heat, electricity, everything in September was 600 kilowatt hours is what it consumed in September, last September, this house. Today is like February. Now, in January, this January consumed 6,000, 6,000 kilowatt hours, right? When I did the maths, it was 10%, 11%, 10%. Uh, because in, in September, there's no... I, I use 100% electricity for all my energy requirements, like heat, AC, everything I'm 100% on electric. So this means that my heating also uses electric because I, I have heat pump outside. If the heat pump is not working, there's a boiler that takes over. I had this boiler, I, the reason why it was 6,000 this year, was last year was like 4,000, because I had this boiler, electric boiler running. So the heat pump alone, if I just had heat pump running, it would cut the consumption in half, but I didn't have heat pump running outside this, this uh, winter, because I want to collect the data. So I just run it on that boiler. So I, uh, so now I know how much, uh, you know, how much for heating, because I, I, I heat those, those tanks that heat the house by electric source heater, either, either a boiler, that boiler there, or a heat pump outside. Now, the other third uh, heat source that I have is a solar collector, right? Outside there, right? you see right beside to the left of the solar panel? I have to complete that project as a solar collector. Now, just doing the maths, I know that in winter, if it, the house consumed 6,000 kilowatt hours. This means that 90, 80, 85 to 90% of electric consumption is heat. So if you take care, if take care of your heat, you don't need much, much electricity. Like literally 600 watt this house consumed in September. 600 kilowatt hours. That's nothing. 6,000 in January. Right? So heat is where your electric heat and a little bit of AC in the summer. I mean, in May, it was 700. In June, it was around 1,000, if I remember. So AC doesn't consume much, right? I don't have AC turned on in September. So it was uh, the lowest I had was September, 600 something. I went through my consumption for each month um, through my hydro. So I, I need, before I, I put these... Uh, these energies, the solar panel, solar collector, I'm collecting a year worth of, uh, of uh, uh, consumption data. And so I have comparison before and after comparison. So think about this, heat is where you lose a lot of energy because winter in Canada, through heat, we lose a lot of energy. And by using a solar collector, heating hot water tank to heat the house through the sun, I cut down my heat consumption and I take care of it for winter. So that's my plan. All right. Thank you for listening. Um, and I'm going to up upload this on YouTube. Uh, thank you so much. Please subscribe. Thank you. Bye.